You're still with Morning Live. Thanks for being with us. Now, some opposition parties in Parliament have expressed mixed reaction to a statement by National Assembly Speaker Tandi Modise uh, that is, uh, establishing uh, too many portfolio committees actually runs the risk of excluding smaller parties from participating in oversight duties. Modise was testifying at the Commission of Inquiry into allegations of state capture earlier this week. She further told the Commission that it is regrettable that Parliament only woke up when things were really bad with regard to the allegations of state capture, uh, which further cast the oversight role of Parliament into the spotlight. And joining us now to discuss uh, these issues further are members of the National Assembly, Ngabayomzi Kwankwa, uh, who is the Deputy President of the United Democratic Movement, uh, also African Transformation uh, Movement spokesperson Busiso Mwango, as well as a former chairperson of the Standing Committee on Public Accounts, Scopa, uh, Temba Koti. Gentlemen, thanks so much to all of you for joining us. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you, SK. Good morning. Great. All of you there, I can hear you. So let me start uh, with um, Ms. Modise this week, saying that it's regrettable uh, that everyone only woke up when things were already really bad and that Parliament must apologize to South Africans. So I want to know from you, did Parliament really just wake up uh, when uh, the evidence points to members uh, of Parliament who knew about uh, things that were going on, given some of the uh, ad hoc committees that were set up? So did you eventually wake up and wake up too late? Mr. Kwankwa, let me start with you. Well, that statement is not true. It's wholly untrue in the sense that Parliament has always endeavoured to play its role effectively. But the African National Congress uses the majoritarian principle to crush whatever proposals come from committee members, to try and crush whatever uh, concerns that other committee members raise, because their intention was to always protect members of the executive. Their intention was always to protect also uh, departments on their pain before committees. If you, one were to go back to the minutes of the meetings of the many ad hoc committees that took place in the past, <coughs> Uh, many will, re will, will be able to pick up uh, the positions of opposition parties on those matters, the issues that we raised sharply, even if, if you were to talk about the Gandla uh, Commission of Inquiry that we did in Parliament, at the SABC Inquiry, you know, we raised issues sharply there. But the strategy of the ANC has always been to try and subvert checks and balances on the executive, because remember, they probably all look to the state the, because they are members of the same party. It's about the ANC doesn't see parliament as an independent institution, but it tries to turn it into a rubber stamping institution uh, that endorses decisions of the executive, even when they are questionable. And that is where the problem is. And, and the speaker must not lump us or tie us with the same brush if her political party has failed to play its role. We have played our role effectively as opposition parties in parliament. So, uh, uh, Tim Akodi, evidence leader Alec Freund at uh, the commission uh, quoted you and also asked uh, the National Assembly Speaker, that's Tani Modise, to explain why uh, there were no follow-ups, uh, no compliance and sanctions on uh, clearly expressed recommendations by bodies uh, like the one that you served on. And you were, of course, one of the longest serving members of parliament and a uh, long serving SCOPA chairperson. Please explain to us, you know, how during your tenure, a parliament and that oversight function actually functioned, if it functioned effectively. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, indeed, um, the work of oversight, I've always said, it's a political function, not an administrative And decisions taken or not taken were always based on political concentration by all the parties that were in parliament. And we, in the Standing Committee on Public Arms, uh, did our work diligently in terms of the rules of parliament reported to the National Assembly. Once our reports were adopted, they now were in the hands of the Speaker's office that had a responsibility to follow up on them. And <clears throat> you'll note that um, Parliament adopted the oversight and accountability model, which sought to, to lay the parameters uh, on how Parliament would do its oversight. And in that document, there are two critical points. One, it is that the 
Parliament should have a mechanism to follow up on its resolution. And secondly, that uh, <coughs> the Speaker <coughs> must be able to call out ministers in the House, those who are not complying. And both these two uh, were not implemented. I actually wrote on behalf of the to House Chair, uh, saying that as a committee, we are requesting that the Speaker's office should set up a follow-up mechanism because we adopt resolutions, nothing happened. And all of those things were not done. So it cannot be correct that uh, somehow there was a soul on the road to Damascus kind of moment about persons that uh, were happening. We as COPA were reporting on, which the Auditor General was reporting on a kind of basis. It was very much political choice. Right. Uh, apologies there, um, Temba Gordi. We seem to be uh, having problems with your connection as well. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Ngwango, let me bring you in. In terms of uh, this oversight role, um, uh, Tani Modise said uh, you were also, as Parliament, supposed to follow up on ministers, uh, but, um, you know, to respond on the floor of the House to demand uh, responses. Uh, but this uh, seemingly didn't happen, following on from uh, what Mr. Gordi said. And as I asked that question, I believe we've just lost as we see some Ngango. Um, and if you're still there, uh, let me put that same question to you. Um, you know, the, the, the follow up and uh, ministers uh, being asked to respond on the floor of the House uh, as you demand responses from them. Is that happening? If it's not happening, why is it not happening? And what is the solution? It is the same presiding officers who tend to protect ministers and members of the executive when they have to account to parliament during question and answer sessions, during oral questions in particular. You'll recall that in the majority of instances during those sessions, members of parliament, in particular members of the opposition, would always complain about the poor quality of the responses that we get from the ministers. A minister can stand up and say something that is completely unrelated to the question, and when you raise your concern with the presiding officer, the presiding officer will tell you the minister has answered. So the minister can go there and just deflect and try not to answer the question. And then that will be taken as a minister having provided a response to your question. It's, it's almost like it's a, it's, a, it's a tick box exercise to say the minister has appeared in front of parliament and said a thing or two, even if it's irrelevant to the main issue. So they are able to avoid uh, difficult and critical questions on issues. <laughs> That's the ANC again subvent, subverting checks and balances on the executive. The other question is, <clears throat> you'll recall, especially during the Zuma years, 2014 to about 2018, it was the norm for ministers not to attend question and answer sessions. We regularly, as opposition parties, had to write to the former deputy, to the then deputy president, who was Cyril Ramaphosa, complaining about the absence of ministers uh, during questions and answer sessions. But the other issue that is required here is precisely what um, uh, Comrade Member God is saying, that it's the executive authority of parliament that can stand this authority on behalf of the institution. Uh, when, when you're dealing with truant ministers, it's only the executive authority that can deal with them. When you deal with issues where they come to parliament and not provide proper quality responses, it's the executive authority that should do that on, on our behalf. When it comes to recommendations that are ignored, recommendations of parliament, remember when you do oversight, you spend a lot of money going to different parts of the country, trying to establish what the problems are in, in, the, in government departments, and you come back with recommendations that members of the executive can just willy-nilly ignore. It's wasteful expenditure. It wastes people's time. Even in portfolio committees, you sit there, you raise the same issues. You look at the departments, for example, public enterprises. I look at small business, there's a different minister now, except, but public enterprises in particular. I was a member of that committee since 2013. And the issues with Bedevil, most of the SOEs, are issues that we raised as far back as 2013, but 90% of the recommendations were never implemented. Who do you blame for that? Do you blame parliament or political parties who are represented there? Or do you blame the executive authority of parliament that is supposed to do something about the recommendations that come out of the institution itself? Mm. Uh, Tim Agotti, what is the solution to that problem? Well, you know, like I say that uh, oversight is uh, it's a political function, meaning um, it depends on the 
mindset of the majority party because ultimately whatever you raise in parliament, it will be decided upon by the majority, even in, in committee. So for as long as uh, the majority party is bent on uh, defending uh, ministers and officials who are not doing right, um, we are not going to see a change in it. You will see when the ANC is going to its conference, uh, the factional battles playing themselves out, that's when you see a heightened uh, but beyond that, it's back to normal. Uh, I may not be in parliament, but my sense is that uh, you have a new administration, uh, the levels of accountability, the levels of uh, financial mismanagement, that's the same. So, <clears throat> It's not as if uh, people have woken up to malfeasance and they're doing something up. Uh, because political orientation of majority party has not changed. So you are not going to see any dramatic shift uh, in the way parliament has functioned. And I'm sure when you have other political factional battles in the majority party, if it's still a majority, you'll have another state uh, that is going to go through what is happening now. And Everybody will say, well, we're not aware, blah, blah, blah. But it is all a question of uh, the political will on the part of those who could it in the National Assembly, do what is right. Otherwise, uh, like I would say, and I might be wrong, but I think what the State Capital Commission is dealing with, over 99% of what Scopa dealt with is what the Auditor General reported in. It's nothing new, uh, but the question was, what has been the response to it? It's all has to do with political will. So um, I must say, all of this uh, not making for a great listening to and watching because it seems as though there is no immediate solution to the problem that uh, I was asking about. Uh, but one of the other touch the points... So <coughs> the solution... Oh, uh, go ahead, Mr. Kwankwa. The solution to this thing is that we ourselves, members of parliament, the executive authority of parliament, should uh, take ourselves seriously. And that on our behalf, it's important for the executive authority of parliament to assess the authority of parliament when it deals with other arms of the state, in particular the executive, because we play an oversight role over the executive. If we don't get leaders who understand the role of parliament, who are there to serve that purpose, who ensure that uh, uh, we hold government to account on its programs and on its work, uh, Parliament as an institution will never function properly. Mm -hmm. uh, we ca it can't be left to a few political parties who are a minority to try and hold government to account. It's the responsibility of all of the all, of all members of Parliament to take an oath of office and say that they are going to do their best to to make South Africa uh, to create a better life for all. Mm. Um, I believe Spusiso is back with us. I uh, just want to see if he's there uh, because uh, let's bring him into the conversation as well. Uh, joining us uh, via telephone now. Uh, Spusiso, thanks for getting back to us. Now, um, one of the other touch points uh, that uh, Tandi Modise uh, gave evidence about was, of course, uh, the issue of uh, budgets and uh, the passing of budgets by parliamentarians. And uh, she mentioned this as another demonstration of Parliament's power in its oversight role, uh, because, uh, as she said, uh, Parliament can actually withhold uh, its vote uh, until there is clarity on a particular budget. Uh, but uh, she says that uh, power, uh, the members haven't used that power effectively. Uh, what's your response to that? Thank you so much. No, she, she, she was being unfair, as, uh, as Kwanga said earlier on. She is from the majority party in parliament, the ruling party. In each and every committee, they always have big numbers. Even if you vote in any motion, they always have a, a majority a, a, a view. Now, whatever outcome is influenced by the numbers that we, that we have in the assembly. She can't be saying that those powers are not exercised correctly by some members of parliament. Once the ruling party has a position, they come and address their caucus as to this is the position to vote. Whether the smaller parties have a different view, when the outcome of the vote is announced, it favors the ruling party. It is the ruling party that must get itself in order and be able to do things without fear 
that those who are in the Tule House will deal with them. It's, it's unfair to say, even to say members of parliament must apologize for what is happening. Because as I'm saying, those who've got a majority view, it's them, it's the ruling party. Once they act with their conscience independently as members of parliament, respect the oath of office and respect the constitution, things will change. You can't say members of parliament are not exercising their power correctly when we are from the majority party that always wins in whatever motion, whatever debate. She was being unfair as far as ATM is concerned. You know, the smaller parties always resort to courts if they want to have things done, or want to have a certain motion debated or passed. Because those who are from the majority side will always dictate and get what they want. Mm. So, if we take a, a topical issue at the moment, um, uh, as Busiso Ngango, like what? the question we are asking right now about um, the Cuban engineers who are coming into South Africa. So, mm. they will be paid 2.5 million mm. rand per annum per mm. engineer. So, how does this go back to Parliament? You know, how do you then, as Parliament, conduct your oversight role with regard to how things play out? You may not have known that this would happen when you saw the budget initially, but now that this does come into play and it is in the public domain, what does Parliament do? As I'm saying, that especially on these the smaller parties, we'll raise these issues will even sponsor motions to be debated. We'll object to some of these things. But when it goes to a vote and you don't have enough numbers, those who are in the majority will always defeat you. That is why I've said earlier on, the smaller parties always resort to court, whether they interdict a certain um, a, a motion or a certain a big program to be done. It will, it's always be the option. But in the House, those who've got a, a large number, they, are, they, they always dictate. That's why I'm saying the speaker is not uh, fair if she paints everyone with a trash, knowing that they control the majority uh, in, in the House. Or the issue even of those equipment doctors, we we'll ask simple questions. So much money when we have unemployed graduates in this country. Some of them are engineers. For the 27 years this government in power, have we failed to produce good engineers who can really do whatever their country needs, maybe at a cheaper rate? Why have every time to go abroad and bring people? We always capacitate, always say we need special skills. Country produce, and we raise those things in parliament. But when it comes to a voting, you'll be defeated. Mm. It is those who've got the majority who must be honest with the people of South Africa and be able to even to apologize on what she's saying, the issues of state case and the likes. Because we, as, 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 as my colleagues have said, we've been raising these things. But if you don't have a necessary number, you would be if it in the committees, the representation in committees, they always have larger numbers. Yeah, the ad hoc committees, they always have larger numbers to influence the outcome. So it all goes back to those who've got the majority in parliament, whether they seriously want to governing this country correctly. Okay. We are out of time, but I'm going to give okay. each of you 30 seconds as your parting shot on this matter because we are out of time. We have to say goodbye to SABC2 viewers or we'll be cut off. So 30 seconds each. Uh, Mr. Kwankwa, you can go first. SK, I want to give an example about how, how we don't take ourselves seriously as a parting shot. Uh, there was a time when uh, Mr. Jabu Mabuzo was still the chairperson of ESCOM. We went there to see the board. They snapped us. They wanted money from the state as the state standing committee on appropriations. I made a recommendation that we should pass the budget, but they were given the money a week later as if nothing had happened. And that board had not accounted to parliament before they were given the money. It's as simple as that. We need to take ourselves seriously as parliament or we get the public to deal with us. Mr. Tema Koti? Yeah, I think what Parliament needs to do is fully implement oversight and accountability more. Firstly, in terms of ensuring that there are follow-ups on questions at the House and that the action is taken by the Speaker or ministers who are not accountable. If we have that, I think we would improve the oversight. Uh, Spusiso? 
Well, it's very important that the parliament improve its over, over, uh, improve on its oversight role. But we must be the, the duty of each and every MP to exercise uh, uh, his or her conscience in dealing with me, these matters in a genuine manner, not influenced by those who are outside for a certain outcome. Let us be honest and be genuine in the governance of South Africa. Well, thank you so much, uh, gentlemen. Ngabayomzi uh, Kwankwa of the United Democratic Movement, African Transformation Movements, uh, Spusiso Mwango, and of course, um, the former chairperson of the Standing Committee on uh, Public Accounts and APC, uh, President Temba Koti, uh, speaking to us there on Parliament and accountability in its oversight role or the failure thereof. Uh, Monda, what the solutions are going to be, something we need to perhaps think about very urgently. Right, this is where we have to say goodbye to our